Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. In this video I'm gonna take a look at something uh, special and uh, rather fun. I'm gonna take a look at this one which I got recently. If you have followed my channel, you know that I mainly uh, do uh, restoration works and repairs of old computers and gaming consoles. I'm not too focused about uh, gaming itself and uh, whenever I do game, I actually like to play some of the old uh, retro games from back in the 80s and the 90s. However, to play those old retro games, you have to deal with a lot of stuff. Either you have to use emulators or actually use the old uh, retro computers computers that you have or gaming consoles and if you want to play emulators you need to use a computer and it's hard to hook it up to your television uh, and find the controllers to use with it or if you are interested in one particular uh, type of uh, retro games you could buy the modern variants uh, of those there's a lot of those but if you want to have all those it costs a lot and you have a lot of devices around so this product here promises uh, to fix all that and give you all the games you need from the 70s up to the 90s in uh, one system. So this box was uh, recently sent to me by a company that uh, wanted me to test it out and give it a review. And I'm not being sponsored by them. They sent me this device for free and I can do and say whatever I want. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, do a little uh, unboxing first. Fear not, I will come back to all the details about this system, uh, who made it and what it is and everything. And uh, of course I want to test it out and uh, play some games. Okay, look at that, it's uh, Haribo Gold Beers. But there's a PS4 uh, controller. Yeah, that's one of the things with this system. It supports uh, almost any kind of uh, controller. And here we have another 8-bit Do Pro 2 Bluetooth gamepad. Okay, looks nice. And here we have a bag of uh, more goodies. Uh, more Haribo. Oh, those look uh, nice. Then we have the main item. Yeah, and this is big and heavy. All right, so there you have it. There is the retro gaming console. Looks very nice. I like black, very stylish. HDMI, USB port. Let's take a look at the side. Nothing much there. Backside. So this looks like a little uh, computer, like a PC, obviously. It is probably that. So here we have regular IEC power input, power switch. HDMI and VGA and uh, more USB ports and uh, network interface. Looks very nice. I'm really excited to take this out for a test. But uh, before that, let's take a look at uh, what it actually is and what it can offer. The retro gaming console is uh, made by a company called Boutique Retro Gaming in Valence in France. And uh, here's their website and uh, it's all in France, which I don't understand much of. But uh, they are uh, working on an English uh, version of the webpage right now. So we can take a look at that. And uh, here we can read a little bit about the console. It's 115 consoles in one. It has maximal compatibility. You can adapt it to yourself and it uh, works on all screens and should be very easy and ready to play. Plug and play. 
intuitive and scalable and uh, you have a large choice of retro games. They have different kinds of uh, retro consoles. They have um, smaller handheld ones and a little bit bigger ones. They also sell uh, all kinds of uh, retro gaming stuff that you need to play, like uh, adapters and uh, controllers and uh, memory cards, all sorts. Now, this is the one that I got, the Retrobox Console 8, and that's the biggest and uh, most expensive one. Yeah, it says it has 75,000 games, and it is in fact a AMD Ryzen 5600 processor with an AMD Radeon Vega 7 graphics card and uh, yeah, 32 gigabytes of uh, memory. So that's quite a powerful computer and it is of course uh, possible to install Windows on this. It even comes with a blank 256 gigabyte SSD hard drive that you can use to install uh, Windows 10 or 11. And it has 114 playable systems. As well as the SSD hard drive, it also comes with an 8 terabyte uh, hard drive full of stuff. And here you find a list of the 75,000 games it has. And it's ranging from uh, the Atari 2600 uh, from the 70s up to the PlayStation 3. Here's a list of uh, all those 75,000 games. So yeah. Here we are into the Amiga 1200, which you recently saw my Amiga 1200 uh, getting restored and fixed. And as I said, this is not the cheap Chinaware uh, retro console. This is uh, quality and depending on the options you select, it costs around 1000 euros. You will find the links to these sites in uh, the description. All right, it's time to take it for a test and uh, see how easy it is to set it up. I'm gonna hook it up to my uh, lab television here, uh, which uh, works with almost everything. Later, I'm gonna take it down to my living room where I have a big TV and a hi-fi system. So let's first hook it up here. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of connecting the HDMI cable and the power and you're ready to go it also has a display port here if you have a display port screen and a vga if you have an old vga monitor as i mentioned i am not really a gaming channel i am more into the hardware and fixing and restoration of old computers and game consoles but if you want to follow my channel and see what I do, uh, then I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And if you're new to retro gaming, there's a lot of good retro gaming channels on uh, YouTube. So just uh, search a little bit around. So now I place the console over here where it's not in the way of my TV and the form factor and size. Uh, yeah, it's uh, quite easy to place it. I mean, it would be better if it was half the height, then it would fit uh, like a normal CD player or something like that in uh, your TV bench. But I guess uh, with a powerful computer like this, uh, that wouldn't be possible. But you could easily hide it under your uh, bench or behind your TV if you have a little bit larger uh, table. So I'm gonna take this PS4 controller out of the box and that's the one I'm gonna test with. Back in the day when I did some games consoles gaming in modern day I had Xboxes and I still have an Xbox One which I use from time to time. Hey it's almost like a Christmas Eve uh, <laughs> getting all these great presents and uh, yeah this one actually looks and feels really good. Uh, yeah. It's not cheap design, uh, it's quite heavy, I don't know what this is. This is a wired controller obviously and it uses a USB so just gonna insert it there on the front. You can of course uh, use those ports on the back. I'm gonna test the wireless controller afterwards and I'm even gonna test an Xbox controller that I have, see if that one's working. 
Okay, I'm gonna set my TV to HDMI 1, which is the input I used. Filming a screen like this is never ideal because uh, you don't see the real uh, resolution and quality of uh, the picture. And also you can get artifacts and things, disturbances uh, because of uh, the sync rate of the screen compared with the camera you're filming with. Okay, enough with the talking, let's power this on. It has a mains power switch uh, on the back. And on the front here you have the actual power switch. Okay, look at that. It has a nice uh, flashy LED fan. Okay, so the machine went right into BIOS and uh, here we can see that it's uh, AMD Ryzen 5 and uh, it has 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, the web page said 32 gigabytes, but uh, I guess 16 gigs is uh, enough for most purposes when it comes to retro gaming. But I didn't expect it to go right into BIOS. I was expecting that it was um, already set up and booted right into what uh, I want. Aha, now I see. You're supposed to insert uh, the memory stick that comes with it. This has the Batocera software that is used to run uh, this uh, gaming console. Now we're talking. We're in. <laughs> okay, the instructions could have been a little bit clearer on that. But obviously you can probably install this software onto the hard drive if you want, so that you don't need to use the memory stick. Okay, what do we got here? Let's uh, check out. Okay, yeah. Controller works right away. Windows, Windows games, Wii U. Here's everything. <laughs> TI-994A, that's really old computer that I have featured on my channel. <laughs> but obviously I need to find Commodore 64. I think I'm going the wrong direction. Oh, here we have Amiga, CDTV, Amstrad, Apple II. No, we're talking. <laughs> Atari 800. Okay, here we have Commodore 64. Now these are the games for the Commodore 64. Let's try 1942. That's a classic. This is really smooth. <laughs> Look at that. It's uh, yeah. The picture is not particularly well adjusted to my screen, but that's uh, something I can uh, adjust myself, I guess. Then you need a keyboard maybe, or I uh, hopefully there is a built-in uh, soft keyboard that you can use so that you actually don't need a keyboard when you play. Yeah, look at that. That's a really clear picture. <laughs> Obviously a little bit too uh, enlarged for uh, my screen. Let me see if I can do something with that here on uh, my setup on the TV. Set it to 4.3, then it's a little bit more uh, like the original. But I guess you can adjust that uh, in the settings of uh, the software. <laughs> Good old 1942. I'm a little bit rusty here. Yeah, there's a keyboard, all right. But now it seems to have lost uh, <laughs> contact with the controller in uh, the game because I can't press fire anymore. And it's kind of cool that it has previews from the game. Zorro, I remember that. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to know where, what you actually need to do when you are into these uh, trainers that uh, ask you to do <laughs> stuff before you start the game. So I want, I don't want trainer, 
but how do I go down to start the game? Of course, this is not a weakness of this console. It's just like how it is with uh, these emulators and uh, all different games use different types of uh, ways to start. And uh, so in this case, I was not able to figure out how to start the game. So I just exit and uh, check out something else. Saxon is cool. This one I was able to start. Yeah, that worked fine. Nice. Okay, let's try something uh, a little more special. We have uh, the pet. <laughs> Not a lot of uh, action games there. You have... Uh, Commodore plus four, you have the week 20, but let's try some Amiga, Amiga 1200. So it has a lot of games that doesn't have an icon and the text is kind of small, so hard to read what's actually on it. But uh, yeah, most of them has uh, logos. Let's try fifth gear. Okay, <laughs> I need to figure out the controls and uh, yeah, so that wasn't easy. I, uh, I didn't figure out how to control the car at all. So I talked a little bit uh, with the guys who uh, make this console and uh, yeah, it's supposed to be empty. The hard drive is full of uh, games, but it doesn't have an operating system. You are free to install Windows or any other operating systems on it if you like, because there's an empty SSD drive in it. But in order to boot and run the software without an operating system, you can use a memory stick like this. And check out this little remote control. It's for uh, the fan LED. So yeah, isn't that cool? Adjust the brightness and you have a mode it can flash. I think I have it like that. Okay, we tested some games and so now let's check out the, the system. And uh, when you're in uh, the main menu, you can press uh, the menu button and uh, you have this quick access. You can uh, launch a screensaver, view the user manual. You can restart the system or shut down. And on the main menu, the other menu button, you have game settings. Controller and Bluetooth settings, user interface settings. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, check the system settings. Obviously, I want to have the image stretch like this, uh, where it fills the whole screen, a uh, wide screen. But I want to see if there's some adjustments to uh, when you run the games. So here I. I think I found the setting for that, the uh, game settings video mode. So um, yeah, you, had, you have auto, I'm gonna say uh, max 1920 times 1080, maybe that's better. Then you have some game renders, you can emulate scan lines. I'm not a fan of uh, that, so uh, I actually don't want any shaders. Okay, now let's check out the uh, Commodore 64 again. See if the scaling of the picture got better. Yeah, it looks uh, better. Scan lines are now gone. Still has something uh, hidden in the top. <laughs> you can also go into uh, each individual emulator configuration and change things. Uh, for example, if I for the Commodore 64 want a particular uh, emulator or uh, setting I can choose that here set the video mode for example and uh, yeah for example let's uh, you try that yeah now it uh, works better like uh, Commodore 64 <laughs> you set down the resolution so uh, yeah now we see the full image of the Commodore 64 well, this is kind of a poor game, so yeah, looks to be written in basic. It's uh, <laughs> not particularly fast. <laughs> yeah, break in six. 
Anyway, there seems to be a tremendous amount of things you can uh, configure here and uh, yeah, you can change different teams if you want something else. I Let's try this one. Now it puts into another team. Yeah, this is more like a list. Not that fancy graphics, uh, but uh, yeah, okay. Let's see what we have here. Dreamcast, Game and Watch. <laughs> cool. Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. So all kinds of game consoles from uh, the past. Let's try a little PlayStation 3. I think that's the most recent emulator on the, this system. Okay, it goes into some emulator uh, user interface here. So here you got uh, 1943. A little bit better graphics. I said 1943, I meant 1942. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, the French version. All right, this is cool. <laughs> this is my kind of game. Okay, let's try a little uh, good old Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Yeah, I think it's everything. <laughs> Why don't we try in 1942 uh, <laughs> on that as well? So we need to select Kempston by pressing 1. Okay, and the controller works. That one just uh, hung. I'm not sure what happened and none of the buttons on the controller work anymore. I can use the keyboard to switch windows, but I think uh, the system crashed. Yeah. But that the Batocera system seems to be very powerful. I have never actually used it before. I haven't heard about it, I think. I mean, you get uh, similar uh, retro game systems, for example, for uh, the Raspberry Pi, you can run on Linux and uh, Windows. But uh, yeah, this seems to be very nice and uh, has a lot of features. And of course, a little bit more powerful emulators. Let's try the Sinclair ZX81 3D Monster Maze. <laughs> so I had to type run in order for uh, it to start. Okay. You can actually use uh, the controller to move around. Don't have to use the keyboard. Okay, footsteps approaching. Oh, <laughs> I was eaten. It's time to test it out on my big TV down here in the living room. And I have a 65 inch LCD screen here. I just hooked it up to one available HDMI input and that's all. This is just a temporary setup. I'm thinking about removing that speaker over there down in the cabinet. I'm not using it, so that will fit nicely with this and give it a little bit uh, room to breathe. Yeah, that looks nice. <laughs> I have it hooked up via the AV receiver that has a lot of uh, HDMI inputs. And that way I also get the audio via the big speakers. I found my spot here in the sofa and uh, yeah, I'm gonna try some of the newer emulators like the VU. <laughs> All right, so this is the modern variant of Pac-Man. <laughs> so there's really a lot of uh, yeah, fairly modern games like this Sega Saturn. What do we have here? Over 600 games. Let's do a little bit of fighting. Fight! One! Ready! Go! Oh. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then of course we have the PlayStation Portable, PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 2 games and uh, there's a lot of games there as well. This is a PlayStation 3 version. Yeah, that was really a great experience. Uh, this works very well on my big TV as expected. <laughs> There's a built-in small user manual here. If you press the select button and view user manual, you get this uh, simple uh, overview here um, of the different uh, buttons and options and how to navigate. For those of you that loves the Apple II computer, uh, there's a lot of games for it here. Not gonna go into and uh, test any of those, but uh, yeah. They provided this uh, small uh, 150 megabits TP-Link wireless N Nano USB adapter. I'm gonna install that. This one just plugs into a USB port. I'm gonna plug it in the back. That came with a driver CD for uh, Windows, but uh, we don't have Windows. Let's see how it works with uh, Batocera, which actually runs on Linux. Let's see now, network settings. Let's see now, enable Wi-Fi. So now it is enabled and I need to enter uh, my Wi-Fi information. That's the one and uh, the password. Now that's set up. Didn't get an IP address yet. Okay, now it says Wi-Fi enabled. I got an IP address, nice. All right, that was a little bit of uh, games. Uh, now, if you are like me, you're probably curious uh, about how this looks inside and what we find inside it. So I thought I'll just uh, open it now and uh, take a look inside. This looks like a completely normal mini ITX cabinet, probably is. So one screw on the side, then just pull it straight out. So there we have it. Uh, that's the big uh, hard drive with all the games on it. And uh, that's a mini ITX uh, motherboard down there. And I can see that only two of the four uh, RAM slots are taken. So this can be upgraded more. Obviously this is uh, power supply, <laughs> takes up uh, most of the space and there is the fan with those fancy lights on it. And this is a 8 terabyte hard drive, that's quite a big one. <laughs> no, I don't see any point in um, taking this further apart, uh, just a standard ITX motherboard. CPU under here and a big ass uh, heat sink there and uh, probably some big fan also there under the power supply. And down there you can see the SSD 
it's a M2 Ultra M2 and there's one expansion slot for a PCIe 2 so you can add additional hardware to this if you buy a console from the boutique retro gaming you get two years uh, warranty and uh, they also provide uh, full assistance uh, by email and phone in case of any problems funnily enough they uh, refer to this console as the museum of video games because it's uh, full of all games inside and ready to play out of the box a little bit about the guys behind the boutique retro gaming. There are some retro gaming fans from France uh, that started to make arcade machines uh, back when uh, the first mini consoles became trendy and uh, yeah just after the NES mini came and they decided to make something themselves. And their final goal is to make customers happy, to enjoy a blast from the past and to provide the best possible product. They have been working on these systems for six years and are continuously improving it. Now, if you want to have a console like this in your living room and you want to sit in your sofa and play, you might not want to have uh, cables all over the place uh, like with this. So there comes this, the wireless uh, controller and it uses uh, Bluetooth and it's for uh, different kinds of systems and uh, also this little Bluetooth adapter, so I'm gonna take this for a test and uh, yeah, you can avoid the cables. Just plug that little dongle in the USB port. I'm gonna put it on the back side later. Okay, looks nice. Looks to be of uh, good quality as well. This feels kind of heavy and uh, yeah, good plastic and a little instructions manual and uh, yeah, charging cable because this runs on batteries. Yes, it has a little uh, rechargeable battery there. You can probably use a standard uh, AAA or AA batteries as well. Just gonna charge it a little bit first. There's some kind of crazy music playing in the background of this. I'm not really sure what kind of music it is and if you can uh, change that. Anyway, let's uh, configure uh, the Bluetooth settings then. Uh, here we have pair a Bluetooth device. So now it's uh, searching uh, for uh, devices. Pairing Pro Controller, it says. Okay, now, so now it found it. 8-bit Do Pro 2 connected. So now it actually detected two games Two gamepads detected, hold the button on your device to configure it. So we need to set up and uh, press the things. So just press the corresponding buttons here. Okay, so now this is set up, so that was uh, quite easy. Nice. Feels quite sturdy and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, good. It has uh, force feedback. It vibrates a little uh, Atari 2600. Yeah, this feels really good. The controls are real good. So I try to adjust on my TV so that I can actually see the whole uh, picture, but um, somehow it is a little bit too big for my TV uh, in this setting. Widescreen. Okay, unscaled seems to be the correct. Now I can see the whole screen, fantastic. You can also search for games. This is uh, the Atari 800 version. It just uh, booted into a disk operating system. How do we load? Please type the one letter. Directory. Paperboy. All right, so I played around a little bit more and um, yeah, tried to learn how to actually use the controller and uh, control the... <laughs> 
the games and stuff and for example if you are in a, a game like this where you have to press space or run stop you could of course use the keyboard but if you don't have a keyboard obviously you have the soft keyboard that comes as an overlay and you just move around and find the run stop key that starts the game and if it asks you for example for unlimited lives you just say no or yes depending on what you want and here it says f7 to begin game so we need to find f7 it's over there also i said that i had to press escape to go back uh, out of the game and uh, that's not true either you can for example press the select and start button at the same time that returns you into the interface and in fact as a shortcut now this button here is uh, mapped to run stop so i just had to press that one to start the game again Alright, so here is Commando, one of my all-time favorite games on the Commodore 64. And I just wanted to show you another feature here, and that is you can take a screenshot by selecting the hotkey and then pressing L1. Also, if you want to record a video, you can select the hotkey plus B. And here it shows a menu also, take screenshot and also save state and load state and uh, start recording. So let's play a little bit and see if it recorded that. Now I want to stop recording. Okay. Also, let's say we have played for a while and are almost there with uh, rounding the game and uh, you suddenly have to do something, you can just uh, save the state and now it's saved in slot zero so that's the first time i saved okay let's now exit and uh, we're gonna see what we recorded to view the screenshot you just uh, navigate uh, over there to the screenshots uh, selection and uh, i don't know <laughs> i didn't find the, the commando screenshots they're just one uh, thing there i don't know where that came from so not really sure if that works um, in all the different uh, emulators um, and also the video i have no clue where it uh, was saved if you want to go back to a saved states you can press uh, x here on the menu and uh, yeah here too uh, the save state from um, the Commodore 64 emulator is not there. Uh, but I did save the state on this uh, Sega Saturn game I just played. So you select that and uh, then you're back where you saved. Anyway, that was some of the functions. And uh, yeah, they are listed here in uh, the instructions manual. and. Uh, there's a few more that I didn't uh, mention. You have translation, you can translate the screen, different languages. You can fast forward and rewind in games. Speed up the game if it's uh, running too slow. You can play uh, net over the net on some games. And some of the games also have some uh, achievements system. Also, I want to mention if you are into uh, the streaming business, uh, like on uh, Twitch or YouTube, you can start streaming of your game here. You probably have to set up that somewhere else. I'm not really sure uh, where, but uh, press the hotkey plus B to go into the menu and uh, stop streaming. This is an Amiga 500 game. And in this emulator, it actually emulates uh, the <laughs> floppy disk drive sound. <laughs> yeah, now I actually took a screenshot here in the Amiga emulator. And uh, yeah, it seems like I was too fast before. Now it says screenshot save. It didn't do that on the Commodore 64 emulator. Again, it's a little bit difficult to figure out how to use the controls in... Uh, the various emulators, for example, this Amiga game. I cannot use the joypad. I should obviously have um, maybe 
configured uh, the controls um, outside of the game. So then I just end up going out and um, starting it again. Also, you need to pay attention to the different games and how you set up the controls. Now it's set up to joystick uh, rider 1 and computer rider 2 and uh, press S to start. Yeah, so now uh, the controls work, so yeah, that's how it is. You need to know the game, in fact, a little bit to be able to set it up. I mean, uh, lots of games, they just work straight away, but uh, like this, you have to configure it a little bit before you play. Did my screenshot uh, show up here? No, it didn't. So, yeah, that's something that isn't working, right? And I also just figured if you select a game whatever uh, emulator you're in or system you're in if you hold down the b you open an additional menu where you can view the game menu view full screen video and uh, you can go to a saved game so there's a lot of settings and uh, options in this uh, system. Uh, takes a lot of time to learn it all, but uh, very flexible and uh, a lot of things to figure out. I'm pretty sure if you go to the Batocera webpage and uh, read a little bit about the system, you can learn a lot more. Also how to modify and uh, install updates and things like that. Now for compatibility with the controls, uh, the Batocero system seems to be compatible with uh, most. However, I have this Xbox controller and I really like uh, those. Uh, it is wireless, uh, but this system does not support a wireless uh, original Xbox controller. At least uh, I could not uh, connect it, but um, obviously you have a USB connection as well. So let's try that. Yeah, that worked. Detected it as um, Microsoft Xbox One. One issue here is that uh, the labeling on the controller is not the same as uh, in the configuration here. So X is uh, Y and uh, vice versa. All right, so now this is uh, usable as well. Works fine. Nice. So uh, that's uh, quite amazing that uh, this uh, machine can emulate uh, an Xbox and you can play the original Halo game on it. Some of the games are a uh, French version like this one. However, I talked to the guys behind this project and they say they will replace a lot of the French games with English when they uh, announce their English version. So now I thought I'd just uh, try to uh, do a little uh, video capture on to my PC here from uh, the retro game console. So now I'm capturing from uh, the retro box and I even added <laughs> the webcam. So yeah, seems to work fine. <laughs> Let's see if we can play a little um, game here. Let's try some Super Nintendo. Capturing audio too. Let's check out some Commodore 64 games just to hear the audio and uh, see the screen recording. Here's Commando again.
All right, uh, with the commando on the C64, uh, I uh, finish off this video. It's been a great uh, experience. Uh, the device works just fine. That uh, retro game console is amazing. And uh, yeah, it worked flawlessly for the most part. Some uh, issues with some emulators and some games, but uh, there will always be like that since uh, they all are different. And yeah, all the games are have a very different setup. So if you have a fairly powerful computer, you obviously can download the Batocera Linux system yourself and install it on a memory stick and uh, run it on that computer. But uh, obviously you need to find all that games and you have to find the, the setup and uh, everything needs to be configured, which is already done on this machine. There's a eight terabyte hard drive full of games. And everything is set up and working uh, quite nicely. So if you have the technical knowledge and the time, you can do it yourself. And the form factor is uh, kind of nice. I really like the box. All right, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the content. And I just want to say thanks uh, to uh, the Retro Boutique for sending me this console. And uh, just want to say thanks for watching and a special thanks to my patrons. See you. Bye bye.